Okay, here we have MP Rate talking, uh, well, a former MP talking about finance. Just a pretty good speech. Check this out. About persistent weakness, which is threatening to undermine our future prosperity. The two most important measures of living standards are output per capita, labor productivity, and equality, and we're going in the wrong direction. For example, on a per capita basis, our economy is not only stalled, it's actually contracting. Real GDP per capita has fallen four straight quarters, and we are producing less per person today than we did in 2018. On labor productivity, that's the amount of output generated per hour, it looks even worse. It's fallen 11 of the last 12 quarters, and the productivity numbers in the first half of the year are below what they were in the final six months of 2014. If things don't change, we'll soon be talking about a lost decade of productivity. The scorecard also shows business spending on research and development continuing to stagnate and lag behind our peers. But some good news. We see that businesses are slowly stepping up. For the first half of the year, non-residential business investment was up an annualized 8%, which is pretty solid growth, and it's much stronger than the economy as a whole. There's also signs of rebounds in the construction of new factories, though we're still well short of pre-pandemic levels. We really have to double down on our collective efforts to figure out ways to continue to support an upward trend in investment. Back to you, Anne. All right, so the House of Commons today was all about Anthony Rodda's apology. The Conservatives are demanding that uh, the Prime Minister apologize as his office was uh, in charge of vetting. Um, many calls for him to resign. This is in the international news. It's, this is just crazy. Leave your comments down below. But this is about um, Finance Committee, uh, this, this little video section. And uh, it's how the conservatives are looking at fiscal responsibility and and all that. It's a little bit telling on how they would lead. Thank you, Mr. Check Chair. Thank you to all our witnesses. I'd like to go on the record saying that uh, pre-budget consultations that have this many witnesses at committee are very hard because there's so many great people ask questions. I wish each other committee would frankly take it upon themselves to dig deeper within their own remits and provide the government with some recommendations that they want to see in the budget. But I want to spend a few minutes with Governor Dodge. <clears throat> Governor, you mentioned uh, a number of months ago that one of the things the gut, that the government can do, in fact, you said about all the feds can do to tame inflation is to slow their spending. Is it, do I have that about right? That was a, in an interview that you provided. More or less, yeah. Okay. Uh, just curious. The government top line spending is about 28% above pre-COVID levels. So forget all about the COVID pandemic spending. Annual spending this year is up about 28% versus pre-COVID levels. Does that represent a slowing of spending in your mind? Uh in in real terms, uh, in real terms, it is up, and in real terms, it, it it's actually appropriate that it's up. It's a question of how much and what it is spent on. 